Hi, my name is Kessie Norris. Today I'll be talking about Ida B. Wells. Ida B. Wells was born in Holly Springs, Mississippi. I'm originally from Jackson, Mississippi, and I found this very interesting because we're both from Mississippi, and I chose this topic just because we we're both from Mississippi, and I thought I could really relate to her and where she came from and her background being in the southern part of the world. Now, Ida B. Wells was a journalist, an activist, and a researcher. Unfortunately, she was born into slavery during the Civil War, and her parents were political, active, and reconstructed era politics. So they felt that education was very important, and they really instilled that in part of her life. And so, therefore, she went to Russ College, okay, and to um, further her education. But unfortunately, she got expelled because she had a debate with the uh, university president, so there really was a downfall. And at a young age, she had to grow up very fast because her parents had passed away, unfortunately, due to um, a yellow fever epidemic. And so her baby brother passed away and also her parents. And she raised her brother and her sister. Now, later on in life, she moved to Memphis, Tennessee with her brother and sisters and as an educator. In 1884, she filed a lawsuit against a train company in Memphis for unfair treatment. She was kicked off a class train. Although she won the case, um, the verdict was to simply reverse in a federal court following the hanging of one of her acquaintances, um, Wells Barnett, which focused her attention on white violence. She grew dubious of the reasons why black men were hanged instead of out to study various examples. Like she she presented her results in a brochure and wrote many essays for local newspaper articles. It went like all over the world. And locals were outraged, like they were very upset by her reports of this lynching, um, which was um published in eighteen ninety two. Now she um, and she was driven from Memphis, like, it got so bad that she had to leave Memphis because people were just so upset and just, just really just, just being brutal and all over it. And after a few months, um, this kind of died down, um, a little bit, but after a couple, after a couple more months, it grew very severe. So she had to relocate in Chicago, Illinois. Now, um, Wells Barnett, along with many other African-American leaders, they called for a boycott in Wells Columbian, exposure in 1893. And the boycott is accused of the exhibit committee of excluding African-Americans and presenting the black community adversely, which really took a toll. And even though all this happened, Wells Barnett Mary, Mary we owned African-American lawyer, baby. She, even though all this is going on, she married to a successful lawyer, which was named Fernand Barnett, which is why her, which is why it's Wells Barnett. Um, and they married in 1895, and the couple had four children together, four beautiful children. And Wells Barnett blended parenthood and advocacy throughout her whole career. And even though Barnett went overseas, bringing Lynch into the attention of n new audiences as well, because not only is it happening in the South, but she wants to let others be known as well, that people are also struggling, you know what I'm saying, of this unfortunate cause. And she boldly challenged white women and the suffrage who overlooked lynchings while abroad. And because of her viewpoint, women's suffrage organizations in the United States mocked and shunned her, even though she was trying to bring peace among women and African Americans. And despite this, Wells Barnett remained involved in the women's rights movement, which was very profound. Excuse me. And she founded the National Association of Colored Club, which was also a great achievement.